Welcome back to Diary of a Speed Reader. Today's book is Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez, and I'm giving it five stars. Now, all this week we've been talking about books that deal with AI or data. This book matters whether you care about gender or not because it really accentuates data bias. And that is something that we sometimes think can be removed mathematically, but here she gives one of the best uh, comprehensive case studies across this book. I'm gonna give you three of my takeaways, uh, but again, you should watch it even if you're not doing work on gender bias or even remotely care about gender bias. Her work is really excellent here. Now, the first thing really has to do with this idea that you can really only capture what people are capable of giving you. And here she talks about um, the way that even young children think about gender in fictional characters, puppets, dolls, that sort of thing. There is a very particular pattern to what is already taught at a very, very young age in the way of gender, such that it is very difficult to unbias, even at the data level, pretty much anything. So what does that really imply about the mathematical work you're gonna do thereafter and any inference that's done on those types of statistics? The second thing has to do with flawed inference due to aggregated data. And what's fascinating there, the example she gives, has to do with traffic policy. And in particular, she's noted that in a lot of nations, uh, funding for infrastructure builds such as streets and roads has taken precedent over uh, local community sidewalks, things of that nature. And you think that's great, make the road a little wider. And in America, that makes a little bit of sense. But overseas, where most of that traffic that's going on the roads during those hours is men and wealthy people, you really are taking away from women who are trying to use strollers or somehow navigate with lots of extra packages things during the daytime. And the bias that therefore exists and what that means from a women's time spent perspective is really phenomenal. The whole book talks about this type of inference and if you're a data scientist, you need to read it. Now the last thing has to do with the bias that exists in medical data. And this is relevant if you're a woman, period, you want to read this section, or if you've got any women you actually care about, older mothers or grandmothers that might be trying to undergo different treatments. It turns out that for various reasons related to the fact that people believe that it's harder to test, you get more variability in the data if you have women versus men, even at the animal testing level. Uh, they have found cases where if you do the same test but you actually have women in your study, you'll get completely different responses for drugs, uh, different types of medical equipment, etc. It's scary, it's shocking, it also represents an opportunity within the medical field and hopefully that will be covered. But currently, it is something I think all women really need to read very carefully when they're undergoing medical treatments. And I really wanna iterate, this is not just about gender. There are many different groups, there are many different ways in which uh, misunderstanding of the data or not really appreciating the potentiality for bias can really ruin your results. It is still data practitioners that ask for the text to be run and then subsequently understand and articulate the results to others. And I know there's a lot of great data scientists out there still, she does an excellent job of articulating the potential errors that people can make. So even if you think you're perfect, which I'm sure you are, this is great if you're managing young people and bringing them up to the next level, it's great for you to just have examples on hand. And it's wonderful just to keep your own mind sharp and how you might wanna think about doing the test differently or collecting the data differently. Speed reading stats, this book is 432 pages. It took me one hour and nine minutes to read. If you'd like to learn more about speed reading, please feel free to comment below. Otherwise, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and otherwise supporting my efforts. If you could follow and subscribe my YouTube channel, I would be so grateful and I will see you tomorrow. Stay healthy.